Oh, Hi, it's uh, Ricky of Marshall Times once again. Now, tonight I'm uh, joined by my co host, Shells of Marshall Times. How are you doing, sir? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm awake. That's a good start. That's a good start yeah. to this interview. I think that's the, the kind of way that this is going to go, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, but as you can also see in the bottom of the screen here, we've got two beautiful looking gentlemen. Uh, we have guitarist Luke and uh, <laughs> we have uh, drummer Keith of Dog Tire. So, how are you two beautiful gentlemen doing this evening? A lot, Good. a lot better that you've called us beautiful as yeah. well. <laughs> I think that's oh, the first time I've seen you smile, Luke, to be honest with you. Oh, I because I'm always a miserable bastard. He is a miserable <laughs> bastard. <too. laughs> so this is going to be a wee bit different than uh, what we normally do. Um, but I just thought we would start off by, if you were to sum up uh, the year 2022 for yourselves and Dog Tired, then what would your assessment of the year be? How, how's it I been would, for you? I would say great up until... September and then we had a couple of a couple of shite times with Norway and stuff like that. But yeah, then yeah. there's loads of good stuff since then. So I think it's been been really good. Like we've been doing a lot of uh, working on the album and getting the album recorded and everything. So that's going to be ready. That's, right. That's why. That's I'd the say, main thing. That's why I'd say that. If I was to sum up this year, it's like it's remembering playing gigs live oh, God, or yeah. kind of thing. Remembering that it's actually fun when you're doing it. Great. The process is great, but it's like that build up of three years up to the point you're like, right, recording the album and it's just, you know, we've recorded, been do, in the kind of prep or recording or recording for most of 2022. Right? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So looking forward to next year as well when we're like back to just like Again, swinging the heat about and again, jumping about like an arsehole on stage. That's, yeah. that's the fun part. Like, I right? think it, it takes so long because we've written stuff that we can't play as well. Definitely learned you learned to a point of like, oh, now it sounds ace on the album, we're recording it, and then we'll look at each other like, oh, God, I could play this live. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> learn how to play it live and try and look like you're not just concentrating intensely the whole time. <laughs> yeah, but talking of playing live, uh, without mentioning a certain gig on December the 10th, um, oh, of course not, no, no, not, not just yet. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping the audience in suspense for that just now. But um, you've got a good couple of gigs coming up. So, would you like to tell us what you've got lined up in the next few weeks? Well, I so we've got uh, the uh, Sophie Festival that's uh, this Saturday. Um, yeah. It's going to be an absolute belter. I did have the all the bands that are. Yeah, we can get there. Yeah, no, that's going to be an absolute belter. So for a really good cause, it's for the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. And just well. for this Saturday is the twenty sixth of November, just yeah. for whenever this goes out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I don't know if you can see that. No, probably no. No, no. It's, no. it's got uh, we've got nineteen sixty eight us Sergeant Thunderhoof, which is a that's a name. name. That's a name and a half. An even better name is Made of Teeth. Gandalf the Green, Everest Queen. That's a fucking brilliant name. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, Young Devils, Nomad, although I believe it's NXMAD, and Callus, which is weird. Callus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've like, interviewed oh, yeah, a couple good. of those bands before. Everest Queen are a really good band. So are Callus. Um, yeah. There's a couple of new ones in there for me as well. But Manchester's a great scene, isn't it, Mark? Like we were down in October. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Manchester, love Manchester. Um, fantastic scene down there. Everyone's um, what's the word? Mental. Together. Um, you know. <laughs> I was going to say friendly, but never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you, you might not remember it properly, Ricky, because you got dragged off by these lot. Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brought up again. Last in Manchester. Yeah. We Can got... I say, look, uh, I got I got Facebook banned because of you. Because I was commenting, uh, I was commenting on uh, a, a certain festival that will come up on December the tenth, which we'll talk about in a wee second. Oh, I, I can see this time I'm going to kidnap you. Facebook started <laughs> <laughs> thirty day ban. So it's like thanks, for Luke. Right. Yeah, we got a <laughs> private message saying, "How dare you try and kidnap a goblin from <laughs> Penny <Pedicure> Shopping?" <laughs> <laughs> I like that you blame Luke for your comment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but we'll, we'll talk about um, the album in, in a wee bit then, but um, it's great to see. I think you're going over to Ireland for a couple of gigs as well, to aren't you? The other two yeah. gigs that we've got in Ireland are the 3rd and 4th of December. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got Limerick on the 3rd and then Belfast on the 4th. Yeah. And Barry can't actually make it, so we've got a stand-in bassist of uh, Jack from Perpetua. I don't know if uh, yes. you've seen Perpetua before. Yeah. He's a great yeah. bassist. Like, um, yeah. And weirdly, it's my birthday on the Saturday and his birthday on the Sunday. So I think it's going to be messy. Uh, <laughs> I think you mean you might need a cover for the drummer as well, Luke. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I think if we just get them through the sets, and then it, I would just be like get in the van when anyone's good and ready, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think we need to run away. I anticipated <laughs> driving us that weekend, but I'll be, that'll be really good. 
Uh, so Jack's been learning the tunes. I mean, obviously, Barry's completely got it. He can't make it, but it's yeah. just from life things that got in the way. I think this is the third gig, no, second gig he has missed in 18 years. So yeah. I think it's it's like, not good you know, enough, guys, is it? It's not good enough. We've had the boardroom <laughs> meetings sitting about going, like, you really need to up your game here. <laughs> <laughs> 18 years past them, like, uh, so. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, uh, it'll, be good, it'll be good having Jack in uh, just for that weekend, and it'll be good fun. It's class. It's kind of, it's like stars aligned for, like, he's yeah. first day on the Saturday, and then Jack's on the Sunday. And, yeah. Uh, Massive uh, also thanks to John and James for keeping the gigs going despite the fact that 10 yeah. ton had to I was going to mention that so obviously it's over in Ireland it's their territory yeah. we were coming to support them uh, mm-hmm. they've had to pull out because their bassist is like broken his collarbone or something yeah. no, I think he's, he's they've torn a ligament I think actually so, that, right? uh, well hopefully he's alright um, yeah. but yeah so they've had to pull out of the gig so we're just going to go ahead with it anyway and it's a shame your talk- cover guy couldn't cover both sets I can't. I, well, I mean, I, I, probably I, could have. Like, I was throwing my hat at the ring at one point. I was like, mate, I'll, I'll help you out if you want. Like, but I, no, it's just, it is what it is. And uh, it's just gutting that they can't play, but we're just going to kind of grab a bubble forms and go for it. Eh? So yeah. that's what's happening. Like. Ah, and there's a bunch of good Irish bands playing that. Exactly. Well, so there's loads good. of great bands playing. Uh, this will be a first gig in Northern Ireland. Never played Northern Ireland before. So we've played Ireland loads. This will be our first one there. Yeah. It'll be cool. Looking forward to it. It's also that feeling of when you get on a ferry, you're like, that's it, guys. We're famous. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Same country again. <laughs> Good stuff. And then you realise you're going up the Clyde. But anyway. Um... Oh, no, but, then, but then you realise you're, you're, you're at your work on the fucking Tuesday after you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, obviously one of the main reasons that we're here to talk about you is because um, you guys are headlining the Mossville uh, Winter Fest that's to be done on Saturday, December the 10th at Ivory Blacks. Um, I, I hate Where? To... Is, that gig, is that the gig you were talking about? Right? That, was, that was the gig that I was talking about. Where is it, Ricky? It's in Glasgow and Ivory Blacks. That's what I what said. What date? Saturday the 10th. Who's How much is it? <laughs> Am I being interviewed here? It's, How uh, much? £12.50 for six bands. We'll go through the bands in a wee minute. Where but, can they buy a ticket, though? <laughs> <laughs> He's doing my head in, boys. <laughs> I'll go through all that in a wee minute, right? Um, oh, yeah. But prepped. I hate to say this, dog tired, but you weren't the first headliners that we asked. We did ask Iron Maiden to see if they were going to come along. We've still yet to hear from the PR but um, well, uh, if they play, they can just slot under us. Yeah, yep. exactly. <laughs> totally agree. Well, we'll have to, have to go below Ash and Crown as well, now, won't we? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah exactly. How about us and Ash and Crown all get a shot on Bruce's plane as well? <laughs> we'll just throw that in as well and be like, Brucey boy, come on, fly <laughs> us somewhere, anywhere. We just want to go. Like, Absolutely, but no, I bet you. And we'll make it, uh, Nickel use the Ivory Blacks kit. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we. we Mark and I just, it was just like this. We had a couple of beers like this and we started to think about festivals and uh, we started to think of bands that we could put on. Uh, and we both love you guys. I mean, Mark's sister loves you guys. Um, I think you're, mm, um, yeah, no, <laughs> I think you're great guys. Drunk. Yeah, I mean, obviously the relationship that uh, DT have with MT, see what I've done there? Uh, <laughs> <Very> <laughs> and clever. obviously, yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Interviewing you guys numerous times and stuff like that, then you were the uh, the band to headline it for us. So very very thankful that you said yes, pretty much straight away as well. So yeah, uh, it, was, it was a kind of no brainer for us as yeah. well. It's like it's an all day festival in Glasgow at that time of year is always great. But knowing that you guys were like running it and it was the Marshall one that we we're like, oh, we've got right. to. Go, go, so <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're doing the video, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be really good, and it's also like the last gig of the year, so we'll pull out all the stops. It'll be the last one. Oh, no, we'll maybe have another couple before we release the album. Oh, no, we've got a couple, yeah, because got, uh, yeah, too, uh... yeah, but people don't know when we're releasing the album. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> it's not releasing in January, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when do we get the review copy? <laughs> oh, uh, that's next year time, sometime, yeah, we'll yeah. be getting sick. We will get it through to everyone immediately yeah. to yourselves, like so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna be playing plenty of the new stuff at the festival. Aye, uh, not plenty. We're still wanting to keep like this was how many? Tra- you, I'm not showing you that board because that's where mm. all the tracks are. But uh, there's <laughs> ten tracks. Uh, but we're going to play three of them. Yeah. At most Fantastic. Time. Excellent. So. Excellent. Was there again talk of an EP, or are we always going to continue with your theme of albums? 
albums, albums all the way. Like, and I know it's in a day and age where albums are not popular at all, especially the younger generation. If it's not a single, it's like shit. If it's not 30 like, seconds on uh, TikTok, you're out. Like. Exactly. I've tried the old TikTok, it doesn't go well. I've tried the only fans that doesn't go well. Either. <laughs> <laughs> That's different You're not going for the right audience of OnlyFans, clearly, because Ricky's found a niche. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking like goblins under waterfalls. <laughs> no, but, uh, aye, so it's albums. Are, they're not. They're not kind of seen as like the, the most popular thing to do. But I love an album with having it like a start, middle, and an yeah. end. It's got like you know, as I much like as you can, like an overarching feel to the whole thing. And the idea of having your career in albums as well is yeah. much better. Like when your deed folk are like, I they brought all those cool albums rather than do you remember that single they brought out in twenty twenty two? Like we did. We obviously did Feast as a single, but yeah. I, I much preferred all the, the process of an album. I thought yeah. that like with Feast, you're putting so much effort into one recording, like one song and releasing one song, and then it's not in any of your albums. Like yeah. I, I prefer to listen to albums. Say, well. Saying that though, when it came to Feast, I was really glad that we did do that. I yeah, same. That, it, was, it was necessary for the time. Was well. Really cool, and it was great just with time and the bloodstock. Uh, but I'm and I'm glad Feast Feast feels like a single. Yeah, Feast doesn't really feel like this new album. Yeah, feels I'm like glad that it's not on the new album in the new year, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's yeah. Got a different be, be a quiz question. Yeah, what yeah, was the yeah, one single great. that was released by Dog Tired? <laughs> 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 I can't remember we chatting at practice and we were saying this like it's it obviously sounds nothing like it, but mind that song I Disappear, the Metallica did. Yeah. <laughs> that, weird, that weird single that came out and everyone's like, Do you mind that song? Aye, aye. But Beast is out, I disappear. But <laughs> but did, <laughs> did you also think like well it only took us a couple of sessions in the studio and within two weeks it's out. Did you all did it was there even discussions like let's do another single guys and this was a good feeling no <laughs> is, oh, is oh, like that, son? a good dog oh <laughs> Flash. that's a good dog yes. <laughs> nah, that, that was never the uh that was never really a, a chat it was always that yeah. like this is going to be an album and the thought even the mere thought of making another single was like oh but you're taking it away from the whole picture of what the album's going to be yeah, yeah. so like, it got kind of yeah as i said start middle and end it's got like an overarching just gets heavier and heavier yeah. sometimes there's parts where it lures you into a false sense of security that's not going to get heavier and it just lowers you again. So. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of thought and time put into like the, the placement of an album, what songs go where and all yeah. that stuff. And nobody cares. Like, but it's, <laughs> yeah. it, it's definitely, you put a lot of time into that and it becomes like a thing in itself and you don't really get that with singles. It's just like, you release it hoping you get loads of views and it's just not, I don't know, it's not really us, to be honest. Yeah. But it's just we're saying that, that kind of, mentality of nowadays when it's like all just like things have to hit you immediately and uh, we're still kind of going to be doing that that videos are like a main thing that's not going to just be one video we'll do multiple videos mm. maybe like touch through hopefully before release so the idea is people will be knowing a fair whack of the songs before the album's even released kind of thing so that's Yo, you know where to send it for that to happen then Oh, um, but i'll ask you individually then keith what yeah. do you think of uh, this upcoming album compared to the rest of the albums? And I'm going to ask the same to you, Luke. Is it a case of, like, it's got faster, it's got heavier? You've had to change the way that you do drums. Have you had to change your setup, Keith? Have you had to practice a hell of a lot more? What, what do you think? Yeah, I would say that the album's more evil. I, I, think, got, I, would, I think this is going to be the same answer. answer. Yeah. <laughs> I would say it's more evil. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite... It's probably darker as well. And so a lot of the sort of content of it is cool. Like the whole sort of, well, in fact, I'll let Luke talk about the content of it and stuff, but it's like, we've basically created our, our own sort of universe almost like, and it's that all the songs are kind of linked, but not, it's not like a concept album, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And uh, yeah, drumming wise and things like that, I've had to basically learn how to play the drums. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's been it's been difficult. It's the first time I've gone into the studio and been kind of like shitting myself about getting it right because it's like it's tough. Like, it, yeah. and I, I, obviously, like you'll hear it and compared to like what some of the drummers can do these days. It's not like not full on constant blasting or anything like that, but it's well, tough. It's play. So. Got, there's wee bits and pieces. Yeah, there's, there's some extreme bits and things like that, but it's it's a tough album. It was hard to do, and I'm really proud of it. Yeah, but uh, I'm looking forward to. Get into it live, but like the last tune that's on it, the kicks that are in it, I'm like, I'm gonna have to learn how to play them every gig, and I don't <laughs> think I can. <laughs> no, it's it's difficult. Like, but, so is it is really, it fair, is it fair to say then that this is the most? Is this you pushing your limits 
the ah, most that you've ever had to do. I think it's the most accomplished do. album by far. And also, I think we do that every album anyway, like, because yeah. we're, it's a learning process throughout albums, and then you get, you you write stuff that you can't play, and then you have to learn it, and then you put it into the next album, it just gets more intense and more intense, but we still keep that constant riff yeah. sort of groove that you need. You need that chunk there that uh, is so important, especially in our sound. Like, Dog Tired, that's a massive part of it. Like, if we got overly complex all the time, it wouldn't be the same. It's not. Yeah. I would say like yeah, so we've still got, like, bits that are intensely complex, but then bits that goes back to 4-4. Four, four. Mm. And you're like, that's the bit that I love. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to buy I, any new equipment? Uh, I, had, I bought all new cymbals, but that was just before Feast. Um, so I got a bunch of minor cymbals, those sort of dark custom ones. They look cool, basically. I bought them and I was like they look cool thankfully they also sound good uh, cool, cool. But, but yeah aside from that I used the same kit that I've used for all the other recordings it's done me well but I think I maybe need to get a new one soon yeah new kit yeah a new kit for the new album maybe but I also so need our, money for that our only fans account is going to pay for this new kit yeah <laughs> so, you know, with all the money that every hard working band that plays original music is currently making so, <laughs> so what about you, you not look- buy exposure box could you not buy it with that oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah we've got we've got oh, plenty of exposure box the cupboard's full of them, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what about you Luke like what have you brought differently what's changed for you with this album then so what, I, what for me, what I really liked about kind of the process of writing this one is obviously it was through lockdown and when we had hit a point of being able to jam with Keith and getting in the room and it was just the two of us. Yeah. Uh, there's like a lot of guitarists, you know, everyone's done it where you've went away and you've essentially had like a whole song created that you're like, right, this is the start, this is what's going to happen. Then you get in with the drummer and essentially you're just going through your bits and things change. But this one, it was really different to saying I would have like four riffs for a song or maybe two, and be like, right, let's just see what happens. There's no rules. And it was almost like retraining your own brain to say that there's no rules. Because once you've been writing songs for years and years, you tend to have like a map of how you want the song yeah. to be. And then you try and change it. Whereas this time we were like, nah, there's no rules. Just do whatever we we want and record it. But yeah. it's hitting the point that we would be like, getting essentially like full songs, like kind of complete within like two jams. And we're like, right, record that on your phone. Next song. <laughs> And we yeah. go into the uh, next one, and then we forget about them. And yeah, and then just we've written all these songs. I'm like, fucking hell, we've got to like, put these like, together for an album. But the actual kind of getting it together for like the the meat of an album, the, this album was really pretty quick. Like, yeah, and I think it's got that natural raw what school feeling. Yeah, me. yeah. So is that a case of like uh, you've got enough material for a, a double album? No, no, because what we actually do is we go through and we cut, we cut the shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. everyone writes, because if you're writing whatever, like, you stumble on what, like, what you consider genius kind of hang at the time. But yeah. there's loads of stuff that, like, nah, it just doesn't cut. So there's yeah. no, there's no filler at all. We're just going to get rid of it all. Yeah. There's yeah. no ideas of what about, and we can come back up with other stuff. But. So when you say, Keith, that it's more evil and dark, who's brought that into the mix? Who would you say? Well, I think some of it, like, uh, we've got a lot of, we've gone even further down the line of dual vocals. Yeah. So, like, there's the whole point of, like... <laughs> oh, boy, <laughs> good boy. Right. It's different to what a normal band counts as dual vocals, though, because quite often what you get with that is more question and answer and more one like this and one like that, whereas Chris and Luke are just, like, a force. Yeah. I just yeah. Like, you want to sound like one big man, basically. <laughs> one big giant <laughs> and a <lion>. <laughs> So we've got a lot of that, and it's kind of adding to the intensity of the album. There's a lot of evil sounding riffs. There's a lot of full on kick parts with like the half time with the full kicks, where it's like it just sounds mega. It is, you know what it I mean? is like, like it's truly like I know. I've always said every every al- album, just if the folk were to say. What's the next one like? Oh, it's heavier. And that's yeah. just consistently yeah. been the yeah. case. And now this is even more so we can say it's just evil. It's, yeah. Like, yeah. it's a really dark, heavy weight. Yeah. Like, so do you think the lyrical content matches the music as well? In the evil oh, and the darker? Definitely. So, Definitely. so lyrics are, are very I horror, love just sci fi. Absolute <laughs> madness, fantasy, like fantasy type of vibe. But the idea is it's open ended enough for people to just think what they want with the lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a uh, yeah, I'm just looking at the board, uh, some of them are mental, yeah, yeah. Uh, just like full on. Like at the time was when I was writing them, it was lots and lots of reading Clive Barker as well as reading a uh, just mad fantasy book, yeah. It's kind well. of like a, I'm no, okay. just like Conan and Clive Barker, <laughs> <laughs> as in Conan, not a Schwarzenegger yeah. film. <laughs> no, <that's crazy. laughs> 
t shirt as well. Going, oh, yeah. Live <laughs> Connor. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that's on Mars. <laughs> in an alternate reality. In an alternate reality. Yeah. So yeah, the, there's a lot of big scale stuff and everything. Like, we've always liked that kind of. I so high up that it's like off the chart, the scale. Like, yeah. things are on such a high level, like lyrical content and a. Yeah, it's like celestial and mental, yeah, but like whilst keeping it honed and heavy. Yeah. But we've also like with this album, this is probably the first time in a while where we've had a few songs that are like uh, the word isn't brooding, you know, like uh, ominous oh, and yeah. like quite slow building. And I then, thought you were like, going to say a ballad, dear. Yeah, yeah I, was, no. I was getting ready for ballad. I was like, what? what? Well, there's no ballads. No, we no, got no, pips yet, no? Dollars yet. You need to make millions thought, of dollars thought, to start making ballads. We thought, we thought about making lots of money, and then we said, no, let's not do a white snake ballad. <laughs> yes. Instead, we tuned the guitars to G-Shark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're always going to keep getting heavier, like, because... We're we're not gone to that stage of fame yet where you suddenly make your albums crap yet. So we just <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. But see, when you're um, you do the lyrics. Look, do you yeah. you know um, Chris is going to come in at certain parts? But do you have, yeah. find it difficult to convey the message as to how you want them to sing it? Or do you just know these are lines? He'll do it in one take, and that's it. Or do you have to like oh, know that? Let's oh, know this week. Our kind of process is like I'll I can, I'll write the lyrics for it and then we we demoed it and actually in here we demoed it because we got the electric kit there as well so we would demo it and then I would sing run just random kind of stuff over it and just kind of getting timings timings are like really the most important thing to me when it comes yeah. to lyrics like the melody of it vocals yeah. are almost like uh, percussion yeah yeah so when, like... when you get the kind of when you get the lyrics to match it this will come in here and then we would record them together. Uh, and it was quite great because we're going to come up with ideas and stuff like that. Uh, but that's where we would do it within here. So when we've kind of got a full demoed version that we would take back to the jam room, learn it in there. But also you've got enough time that you've kind of started vocals at a bit of an earlier stage that you know we we were even changing one chorus uh, and whilst we were actually recording it. Yeah, yeah. All right. To the point that we recorded it, thought we had finished it, then went to the pub and drummed a new time out on the table and then had to go back in yesterday and record the other thing. So, yeah. alcohol, alcohol seems to be a common theme with you guys. Oh, it, it helps with the writing process. Yeah. Oh, exactly. I've heard the pop calling the kettle black there, Ricky, I think. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I, I don't drink, so... Oh, oh. You're drinking Foster's, so it's barely drinking you. Yeah. What's the matter with that? Um, yeah. But I was going to say... The most important question is, uh, Luke, how big's your house? Because you've got a games room, you've got a jam room, and you've got a studio. How, is it a mansion you live in? No, no, the, the, yeah. I said the, the, the jam room is, well, no, our jam room's somewhere else, but this room here is just, the, there's a wee kit. Yeah. The random <laughs> corner there. <laughs> we definitely, like, this is a single room where yeah, we yeah. record on the electric kit, which... Uh, I have here because I can't play it in my house because it goes through all the floors and through everyone's houses. So I've got the soundproof. Door, so we've got the nah. kit here we recorded it on, and then you had to record the guitars through a thing, and it's a tiny little room. Well, our jam room is nowhere near here. Yeah, well, that's exactly what I was going to ask next. Like, are you going to carry on with the same formula where you're recording it? Who you're going to get to mix and master it for you? Well, yeah. this, this, so this time with this album is is Jamie. It's doing yeah. it again. Okay. He's the same guy, Jamie Gilchrist from uh, Nameless City. Uh, Productions, the same guy that did Electric Abyss. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're having the, the cover that's been worked on just now by Laurie Gilchrist as well. Yeah. So, so uh, things which are heavily involved in yeah, doing our yeah. album, basically. <laughs> we came like a new studio at the bottom of his garden. He does have like an, another house at the bottom of his garden. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. It's, brilliant. it's brilliant. really cool. Yeah. 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 This one sounds even better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what, so what ideas have you gave the artist? Did you give them the song titles and say, just go ahead with it? Or did you say, this is what we had in mind? Or are you just giving them the free like, reign? This will sound like a, another typical story that I was really pissed. We chatted with this yesterday, actually. It was like a really pissed and having a chat with Laura and being like, right, this is what I imagine, like, you know, desolate, like desolate red planet. Some dude in the middle of some sort of alien stone hinge, like, Ugh. <laughs> like to the which is like Hellraiser 2 Leviathan leather in them. That's what it's in my head. Okay. And somehow Laura has managed to do <laughs> it. It's that. It like, seemed like a draft. I was like, yeah. that's exactly what was it. Yeah. Was and it, it's amazing <laughs> as well because it looks like like uh, a relative of 
the electric abyss like it looks like the next step yeah. from the electric abyss it's really cool and we've gone for a different color which i'm not going to tell you but you'll probably guess in <laughs> are we not telling them my name i'm saying that are we getting are we getting an exclusive the, the album the new uh, fifth album's called the red verse yeah so you yeah. can guess the color <laughs> blue <laughs> 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 I was certainly, uh, so before I go into the article and stuff like that, just the last question then. So the first the first few months in uh, 2023 then, are you just getting the recording done, everything done, no gigs or anything? You're taking time away from gigs and then We've, in the summer you're going to promote the album or what? Everything's recorded. As of yesterday, everything's done. So we're yes. talking the album will be ready in the next, well, not uh, not ready to be pressed, but it's, it's going to be a complete package in the next week or so, which yeah. is good. But next year is when we're going to be releasing it most likely in the summertime. But uh, we'll why that long? <laughs> why that long? Just we just want a bit of time. Yeah. But we're not time. very patient. No. <laughs> <laughs> Started our promotion too early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we never give ourselves enough time to like send it for reviews and send yeah. it to different companies and things like that. So we're just giving ourselves a wee this bit. This time was just like we just want a wee bit of time. We'll just get it out in summer oh. and we'll, we'll get everything in motion and in place for when it does come yeah. out, kind of thing as well. We have to Probably do a summer grand. festival, Ricky. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you do have uh, but we do three gigs. Yeah. So when coming to March, that's like when we are starting back gigging again. So in March time, after we've done the uh, last gig with yourselves in uh, 2022, is yeah. going to be the tour with a uh, Imperium and King. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah is, I interviewed uh, the guys in Imperium, and they were very much looking forward to uh, to playing yeah, with you. I'm really looking like, forward to meeting them as well. The band's class is what yeah. it's like. I'm just glad that we're on the same three day tour. It's going to be brilliant. Like, yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. Also, it's the fact that it's like our own, all of our hometown. So it's London, New Toxeter. I think I'm saying that right. I did wonder yes. when I did it. Right. And uh, Edinburgh. So we've got the three dates. London is the 3rd of March. Toxeter is the 4th. And then Edinburgh is the 5th. So it's going to be like a. Do you know where in London? Um, it is in 229 in London. I've not heard of it, but uh, yeah. I'm assuming it'll be cool. What's the gig in Edinburgh? Is it Bannerman's? It's uh, Legends. 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 Just aye. Yeah, aye, aye, just across the road. I can get the Monday off because you'll be getting kidnapped. Like, um... <laughs> 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 but I'm really looking forward to that because we never, the only place we've ever played in London was a sausage factory. A German uh, sausage like, factory. <laughs> an actual sausage factory. We played in their freezer. Uh, it was a <laughs> great gig. It was really yeah, cool. It was yeah. Really good gig. <laughs> but, but very, very random. We went out on. The swimming was like, I don't know what I said. Excuse me, we're in the right place to address this, right? Is this really good? Like, that? And then she just opened this like massive sliding door. I was walked into a freezer that was converted into like a gig room. It was yeah, like, yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Great stage, great PA. But that was years ago as well. Like, and that was that you just learned to drive like the day before or something and then drove all the way down to London and right. all the way back. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> at least you knew what you were going to get for your dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really looking forward to going to London, like just because we it's somewhere that we've not really broken. Yeah, it's weirdly yeah. it's the place that we get the most Spotify plays as well. Um, Interesting. Which, well, so I think it's just because it's so big and there's so many people. Yeah, so many people. yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, you've also no, played Newcastle a couple of times. How was uh, Newcastle oh, for you? Played Newcastle a fair way. Yeah, yeah. Balls, I love Newcastle. Balls, it's guys. good to go down and play with balls and stuff. Yeah, Surely it's it's a great venue there as well. And I think, uh, uh, Trinians, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Trinians, yeah. Trinians. I played the O2 Academy. Uh, down there yeah, well. that was really good. It was the O2 2 kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, so, cool. uh, yeah, so Newcastle's always brought me down there. Is, yeah. yeah. Cool. And we'll be touring once we've got the album, we'll be touring. Yeah. As much so as right now, that's, that's all that's officially kind of booked in the park. Yeah. We've got one in the. I also should probably say that the, the gigs in March and also a lot of the other ones that we've got coming up are booked through Duncan, Duncan oh, yeah. Mountain, who has been helping Red us Cross. out a lot. Uh, yeah, who books Red Cross. Red Cross was amazing. He'll um, make sure that you'll do your PR and everything all right as well. Yeah, yeah, he's a great guy. Right, and, uh, he, he helps out like a bunch of bands. And uh, yeah, he's he's been a really good help to us. So yeah, looking cool. forward to next year. Well, mate, continue. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to next Sorry? year. Next year seems like, you know, we've got enough time for the album coming out uh, and it's just going to be all hands of it, kind of. Hey, you're still going to end the year 2022 in a high, so... Yeah. So what, what was that gig again? What was that gig? <laughs> was it uh, students had a gig on the... <laughs> nah, I'm really looking forward to that. Like, I think it'd be amazing. Yeah, um, I, 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 also, probably should have mentioned the bands that are on it. Yeah. Because, well, you're going to say, Mark? 
I was just going to let. I was going to say uh, who's on it and 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 where is it and where can I buy a ticket, Ricky? You're going to tell us where they can buy a ticket earlier, <laughs> right? Well, um, as I've only got three and a half minutes left, otherwise we come back on the link again. Um, because I'll talk for ages. I've got more beer down the stairs. Uh, I've got the rider down the stairs as well, by the way. Um, yeah. So we've got dog tired headlining. Uh, we've got Ashen Crown. We've got footprints on the custard. We've got the head of the traitor. We've got a ritual spirit, and we've got AC Red. Now I don't know why. Uh, but we've got half the bill from the capital. Um, that was unintentional. No, it wasn't. Uh, it's three good bands. Love a ritual spirit. AC Red will bring some party uh, to the band mm-hmm. with their, their trumpets and the trombones and stuff like that. So I hope everybody will be Hello. shaking their ass on their dance floor. Um, head of the tree are just like... <laughs> I was thinking you're shaking your head. <laughs> I was just thinking that Ricky's shaking his ass. So I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fucking hell. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you've got Scottish Death Corps with uh, Head the Traitor from Glasgow. Um, yeah, we've played with them before. Um, yeah, they're, they're really cool guys, like, the, and it'll be good, I think. And uh, Ritual Spirit are really nice guys as well. Oh. They're, uh, they, Ollie runs our Ollie jam room. So yeah. that's where we, we jam in Ollie, uh, Ollie's jam room have done so far. Ah, yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. a two for one <laughs> 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 I'm actually shocked that we've never played with Ashen Ground before because it just seems like one of these things that should have happened by now. First uh, time in Scotland. First yeah, time you, in Scotland. You've got them as your profile thing still. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we're looking forward to it. It's because Ricky has a hard on for Kieran. Oh. <laughs> uh, I was going to go like that. That, that was probably the wrong time. Um... <laughs> But uh, we've also got footprints in the custard. They're just footprints in the custard. Yeah, yeah. party metal man. Probably the words. Yeah, they'll, they'll be good. To like, it. Right, no, I'm looking... really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be great. And uh, also because it's that kind of last gig of the year and things, I think a lot of folk will turn up and yeah. get hammered and just have yeah, a great yeah. time. That's the plan. There's a big after party back at Ricky's. Everyone that buys a ticket's invited. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know. He keeps dropping these bombshells. I don't know anything about this. Uh, we, we, we got a little WhatsApp without you in it, Ricky. Apparently, there's like 30 people coming back to my house. I've only got one double bed, guys. <laughs> it's not that sort of party, night. Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> there are no car keys involved. <laughs> it's definitely not that sort of party. Yeah. Well, listen, I've only just got over a minute left. I want you to come back on for a wee second, but I'll just go to end this interview by saying thanks very much. Um, this will go live on Marshall Times and everywhere, as per usual. Um, but uh, we want to get you on back on to Marshall Radio. Uh, we'll arrange dates soon. Um, yeah, because we want great. to, uh, we're going to play like um, a dog tired song, then three influences, and then another dog tired song. Oh, so okay. you can get three songs ready for us. Um, but I'll give you dates. So it'll be in the next two weeks. Uh, we'll yeah, get you on anyway. Great. So we'll get you on the radio station as well. And Moshville Times, Moshville Radios, Shells, and myself will continue to promote you guys because you guys deserved to be promoted. Uh, cheers Thank for yeah, that's on like much appreciated. And also, once we've kind of got finalised versions of new tunes and that, you definitely be yeah, some we'll of the first the people we will be talking to. Like, so. yeah, you're a nice 100%. man. You're a nice man. Thanks very much for this interview, you guys. Come back on the link again, okay? Just press the same link again, okay? Right, yeah, no worries, thanks, guys. Right, cheers, buddy. Thanks. Bye, bye.